Dalal Street snapped its four-week winning streak. The Nifty and the Sensex ended nearly 1% lower, with financials being a major drag. However, mid-caps continue to outperform. Hello and welcome to yet another Editor's Roundtable. This is our weekend roundup of all the things that happened in the week gone by. I'm Sonia and joining me all the editors today. And we also have Rahul Arora here in the studio. Rahul, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. You know, it has uh, been, guys, a, a week where nothing much happened, although a lot of things happened, right? There was a Fed rate hike that came through, a lot of earnings and uh, the markets were a bit disappointed as well. But given take everything, after four weeks of the market gaining, a little bit of consolidation is what we saw. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head, Sonia. But, you know, the, it was that kind of a week where every day you felt things are not looking good, but then somehow towards the end, like you saw yes, today, for example, the market just pulled back... Uh, one of the other stocks just puts, you know, its hands up and, uh, you know, bails out the nifty. Uh, it's been defending this 20-day uh, moving average, I think 19,550 there, about 19,600 on a closing basis. And all through this, uh, the mid-caps have held strong. The market breadth has been quite strong. For me, that's a good sign. As long as that's holding, I think I'll still give the index a bit of a benefit of doubt after this run. You know, I don't know how many of you watched Oppenheimer, but uh, you watched it? <laughs> the markets felt like that this week, right? Through the movie was so long that you felt like, oh my God, when is this week going to end? When is this movie going to end? But so much happened in the week. You know, you know uh, closing bell, Surbhi was asking me, how's Oppenheimer? I said, you should watch it. But don't ask Sonia how the movie was. <laughs> she, she didn't like it. But, uh, the tickets are still 2,000 rupees. And even the 3.30 a.m. You know, sure. I, so, I know this is a story which Crazy. I really catch. I pay 300 bucks a ticket. Wow. How do you manage to do that? <laughs> I, I went for seven, the you're 7 a.m. show. You're a deal hunter. You know, you're a deal hunter. I know no, that. I'm not. I mean, you get up anyway by 5.30, irrespective of when you go to bed. So, might as well use the time in the morning. What about you, Rahul? Did you catch either Oppenheimer or Barbie? Unfortunately not. But happy that the PVR stocks moved a little bit. <laughs> since that's more related to the profession. I think Rahul would be more happy with the way Westlife has been moving. I think that's been your biggest call. And yeah, how, that's, you know, that's that, out pretty well. Uh, what is yeah. it, like 50 bucks shy of a thousand or something? What it's, about like the market on the whole. I mean, it's been a, a great last couple of weeks, but now a little bit of lethargy is kicking in. How are you feeling about that? It's going to be very tough from here, Sonia. And I, I think because if you look at, there are basically four pillars on which the market stands. One is Reliance Industries. The other is the BFSI sector, which is 40-42%. IT, which is about 12-13%. Uh, and FMCG. So that's about 75% of your nifty right there. I think you're visibly seeing NIM contractions in all the banks. It's going to get increasingly difficult for the next two quarters. IT has been a bit of a shocker uh, this time around. Tech Mahindra, Infosys, uh, even some of the commentary from the ones that haven't been as bad has been very circumspect. And uh, a 3% lever volume growth was disappointing. Uh, Reliance, the big trigger is out of the way with the GOD listing. So I think, uh, or the relisting or the demerger of it. So if none of these participate, it's going to be very difficult to break above 20. Uh, and I think there are visible challenges in the next six months. I think the way Pharma has done this week is telling you a story. Uh, that it may just be the coming back of, of defensives. The good part is consumer discretionary. We were just talking about Westlife is still holding up. I was listening to the Indian Hotels conference call last night. They were expecting a bumper October, December because not only do you have marriage season, you have the busiest piece, uh, period for the G20 presidency for India at that time. You anyway have Diwali and you have the World Cup. So I think discretionary may still hold out, uh, but it's going to become increasingly very challenging to justify valuations from here. I think after Q4, we downgraded 55% of our stocks. Wow. Uh, and we're halfway through earnings season, and I think we're already, we've downgraded about 60, 65% already. So uh, when you're in, still in a downgrade cycle, it's been a liquidity rally. And uh, as you guys, and uh, Anuj was also pointing out yourself, uh, when you have global central banks like the ECB, the Fed, Japan, out of nowhere, turning more hawkish. It's going to tie the RBI's hand. So to, to make a very convincing case for the Nifty to go to 20, take a 10% move from here, looks very, very different. By the way, the Bank of Japan bomb did not go off, right? Sorry? I mean, I was, the bank, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was expecting that today fully, that today yeah. it will be, you know, BOJ, the last central bank, which is ultra uh, sort of loose in terms of monetary policy, and they will start to tighten. But very incremental, very, very incremental move towards kind of exiting that framework. But you were talking about pharma, uh, Rahul. Anuj, uh, story baki hai, pharma. That's, uh, that's <laughs> what you're saying. <laughs> Yes, actually, you know what, I've done some uh, numbers and I, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm not really looking at the fundamental triggers uh, why pharma is rallying. I think Ekta has done that and I don't want to sort of uh, uh, revisit something which she has already beautifully explained. So let me take a view at something which I called an alternate take on pharma. This is a rise of a sector which of course uh, at one point was uh, one of the biggest sectors in India. Now look at what <laughs> Indian pharma is right now. We may talk about one week rally. 
यू कैन बाय द एंटायर इंडियन जेनेरिक फार्मा सेक्टर ईच एंड एवरी कंपनी अवेलेबल एट अ टोटल मार्केट कैप ऑफ ट्वेल्व लैक क्रोज जस्ट टू पुट थिंग्स इन परस्पेक्टिव रिलायंस अलोन इज सेवेंटी आई मीन ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट बिगर दिस ट्वेल्व पॉइंट वन सेवन लैक क्रोज इज लेस दैन सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ रिलायंस दिस ट्वेल्व पॉइंट वन सेवन लैक क्रोज इज ऑल्सो टी सी एस मार्केट कैप सो यू बाय वन कंपनी टी सी एस इन दैट मार्केट कैप यू हैव द एंटायर इंडियन फार्मा सेक्टर विच इज अवेलेबल टू यू दैट्स द नंबर नाउ जस्ट टू गो बैक देर वॉज अ टाइम इन ट्वेंटी फिफ्टीन वेन फार्मा वेट इन निफ्टी वॉज सेवन पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट लुक एट वेर इज फॉलन टू नाउ just about 4.3% this is a case of serious under ownership that you have in the pharma space and for good reason look at what these stocks have done now this is sun pharma the price in 2015 was 1140 look at what market has done from 2015 it's the index itself has doubled uh, sun pharma stayed at 1140 dr reddy's from 4200 to 5600 sipla you can say has okay moved in line with market maybe it's slightly Uh, better than the other peers from 750 to 1170 look at lupin which at one point used to be one of the biggest stocks from 2100 and this is after the recent rally where lupin has moved from 700 to 1000 still it's half of what it was in 2015 the only exception is dvs but that's a different kind of a stock altogether we know that uh, from 1000 it's moved to 3700 that's been the only pharma stock which has done well all through these years uh, now look at this plate and i think this is phenomenal this is the fii ownership in indian pharma stocks then and now 2015 it was 37% in lupin look at what it is now 13% in sun pharma a quarter of the stock was owned by fiis it's down to 16% dr reddy's which has done well of late uh, 38% was the fi holding in 2015 and now it's down to just about 26% uh, and why the space is now doing well uh, and i think there's some interesting things uh, if you look at what these companies will do and uh, i'll give some credit to rahul here for helping me on this uh, Uh, you know all the listed pharma companies will generate free cash flow for first time after many years in fy24 and fy25 sipla dr reddy and sun pharma they'll generate 3500 to 10000 crores of uh, free cash flow over the next couple of years and one final point just look at how these companies are stacked up versus their average valuations lupin is trading at 26 times the five year average is 43 times of course the five year average has been distorted because lupin's earnings have been quite bad over the last five years sipla as well is at a discount to its peers uh, to its five year average dr reddy is at 17 times versus 25 times and sun pharma well pretty much same at 24 times so there is valuation head uh, uh, comfort and at a time when the market is struggling for value this is one space where you have at least some valuation comfort but rahul coming to you uh, and i think uh, Uh, you know you have been talking about this space as well and i i you know i was reading couple of notes that you wrote uh, uh, what do you make of this space and what would be your preferred pick sir so anuj i think the most important slide that you showed about uh, that you showed there on the wall was under ownership right and i think when when ownerships when sectors churn and liquidity is supportive then stock prices become an academic discussion because we don't determine multiples it's the fund houses who basically buy those stocks that determine the multiples because they'll keep buying in excess of it uh, i think what you were showing anuj uh, in terms of the relative valuations falling let's not forget the us market collapsed for the pharma yeah. sector pricing uh, erosion was to the extent of 20 to 30% and even now as you look forward to the next 5 years you have about 140 billion dollars of branded generics that are going off patent a lot of these are very high competitive intensity i think what's going to do well for pharma is going to be domestic plays uh, mm -hmm. and we were just discussing while uh, you were doing your link i think it, the last two years have been so bad that you're going to see a you're going to see an a, a very fmcg like phenomena play out in pharma where you're going to see margin expansion and profit growth and because most of these guys have done their capex the free cash flows are going to be very very strong for these entities now you can ascribe any multiple you want you want to look at ocf to ebitda fcf to ebitda price to earnings ev to ebitda any which ways because the under ownership is so much that's why you're finding stocks that can potentially become big like jv chemicals or ajanta they are constantly going up 5 7% mm. because there is an under ownership and this same thing will happen in it i can assure you you know maybe a year down the line Absolutely. we'll be talking it is going to go up in the same way today that visibility is not there so pharma is coming out of that pain so most pharma companies we'll see about a 3 to 600 basis point margin expansion between the last reported financial year and fy25 mm. which means earnings can compound at 20 to 25% oh, wow. not too many pockets of the market will give you that and pharma is now going to go to a situation where most companies will be between 20 to 25% return on equity and capital employed after many many years 
So if I'm a fund today, and I'll give you an example of a stock called Dixon Technologies. It went up from 2,000 all the way to whatever, 25,000, because some funds just kept buying it. So, you know, they, these stocks, they look like they've done well, but I think the top line will probably be between 8 to 12, 13%, but it's a margin expansion and a, 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 a pad story. And the free cash flow generation. You'll be surprised no, with the kind of returns. Domestic I would be more. Uh, uh, no, I'll be tilted more towards domestic. Uh, Prashant, the only hybrid play I'll play is Sun Pharmaceuticals because I think they've got it right. Uh, whether it's Sequoia, Illumia, Vinlevy, a lot of these, some are, some are acquired, some mm. are proprietary. Mm. I think they've done a remarkable job and I think they're one of the few companies. The other thing, obviously, Prashant, is that, and I'm sure when you inter guys interview pharma management, Revlimid is so much spoken about that let's start looking at things ex of Revlimid because that is yeah. going to wear out at some point in time. Right? Yeah. This is not something that is a recurring for lifetime. Uh, it happened with so many other drugs. Uh, you know, Copaxone was the last big one. Mm. So I think a good hybrid is probably Sun, otherwise the domestic. The only person who can name all these as good as you is Ekta, perhaps. Uh -huh. all these <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know, the other, uh, of course, uh, Pharma was the flavor of the week, but the stock that was uh, you know, disliked this week was m, m after what happened. And I want to discuss that because, you know, they decided to buy the 3.5% stake in RBL Bank. After that, they said that, you know, oh, we might raise the stake further to about 9.99%. It was viewed very negatively by the street. So just for the benefit of our viewers, revisiting that story, remember, a stake by an RBL bank is a non-core investment for M&M. And M&M has had corporate governance issues in the past as well, where they've invested in a lot of loss-making subsidiaries in a lot of non-core investments. They tried to correct that by coming out with a proper, clear strategy on their corporate, uh, you know, uh, governance uh, policy as well as their capital allocation policy. They said that, you know, they have an 18% ROE target for most of their businesses. They divided it into A, B, C categories. So everything was clear. And now all of a sudden they come out saying that, oh, you know what, we're buying 3.5% in RBL Bank. So that didn't go down well with the street. Uh, but of course, there may be a larger play involved, perhaps with MMFSL. You never know. Uh, but your thoughts on what an m and investor should do now? Uh, it's an interesting one because had they actually had this happened as a corporate deal, I think RBL, you know, at one point was touted to become a very big bank and then they had their own issues. Mm. Uh, they are now, if you look at the credit to deposit ratio and the way it's moving, I think RBL is actually doing some of the right things. Asset quality is also moving in the right direction. But unfortunately, I think the reason M&M got re-rated was that one analyst meet where they said it's going to be like, you know, you have Arjuna's eye on return on capital employed. I'm going to be very focused on capital. Now, to buy a stake for 450, 500 crores, uh, and that too, not linking the synergies to MF, MF, uh, Mahindra Mahindra Financial Services, almost a tongue twister. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think what could have happened is, let's say I'm a shareholder, I say, why not give it out as dividend? Right? Mm -hmm. if, I, if, if I'm getting this out of my cash flows or my profits, or why not invest it into EVs or tractors or whatever? So this is, okay, let's just assume something was wrong in the world, right? We don't know what. Let's say China invades Taiwan. Right, which is being spoken about, or something else happens. Crude goes to 100. And let's say the RBL stock price falls 40%. This is going to be taken very negatively by an m, &M shareholder because mm -hmm. this is a financial investment. It's not a strategic investment. You're not getting a board seat or anything out of it. So I think that one thing that m, &M shareholders loved and the ROCs have moved up, yeah. it's not a very major investment. But l since you said what should an m, &M shareholder think, simply sitting here, I'd say, bhai, dividend de do. <laughs> you know, why do this if you're not, if you felt that you were buying a division of RBL Bank, which was complementary to Mahindra you know, and Mahindra uh, Financial you know, Services. What will happen is, uh, in case of m, &M now, the results are next week. So I guess you'll get yet to, you know, you'll get to hear something from the management for sure as to what the strategy is, what they want to do. But, you know, right now it's all about speculation, right? We don't know what, what they want to do, how much they want to raise it further. So I guess, uh, you know, street is divided. I, I spoke to a lot of uh, investors as well. And they are, they're just hoping that maybe there is some more clarity when the management comes and talks for post the earnings on, on I think it's on August on 4th, 4th or something. Yes. Yeah. So I guess I think that will be a key to what m, &M does going forward with, with regards to RBI. Also, bank. if the eventual plan was to, you know, convert MMFSL into a bank, merge RBL with it, I don't know, maybe, then why don't you route the money through MMFSL? Why through m, &M right? That, that was too and I think it could have been done at a corporate level as yeah. opposed to the route that they took. Yeah. You know, it should have been a corporate to corporate transaction. It may have been viewed differently may still have been taken negatively, but it would have definitely been perceived differently as opposed to picking up the stakers, which, yeah. which they did. So hold, sell, buy, what See, do you I do See, I love the tractor story. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if, you, if this hadn't happened, I think M&M 
would be a buy for me even today. I don't think the valuations are demanding at all. I think I things are going you, right. You say SUV or something, that tractors. Sorry, <laughs> no, I think, see, <laughs> you have sub-segments, right? If you want to play through yeah. PVs, you'll play through Maruti. If you want to just play a domestic CV story, you'll play through Leyland. You want to play tractors, you'll play through M&M. So, you know, now you the know, debate Rahul, is all up. Rahul, you know that Rahul, Rahul drives an M&M SUV, right? Rahul doesn't go below Mercedes. So I was just saying that. I was just going to say that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, let's move on. The government actually announced its plan to offload stake in R RVNL. And that stock has rallied 300% in the last one year. The other PSU stocks have also seen a rally. So that's been our focus area this week. How much can the government raise by selling stake in other PSUs? Nimesh has churned out some data. Nimesh, tell us. Well, you know, Sonia, uh, what, I, what I liked about this government's timing is, is that in RBNL, the stock is up 300%. And now they've gone ahead and diluted 5% stake. So timing-wise, they've done it well. But let me just go to the wall and explain what exactly is the big number that I'm talking about within the PSU basket. So, uh, as I said, you know, the, the RV, in RVNL, the government has sold 5% five, five stake. But if you look at the government's holding in the PSU stocks, there are 23 companies within the PSU basket where the government holding is more than 75%. If they choose to dilute uh, to 75%, they can raise close to 1.5 lakh crores. That's a big amount that I'm talking about. If, but that the big question is if they dilute to 75%. As I said, you know, in, in, uh, in uh, RVNL, they've done the OFS, so today was the last day for the retail investors to participate. So, uh, now look at the uh, holdings where the government holding is more than 90%. It's largely dominated by banks, the PSU banks, so to speak, the Punjab and Sindh Bank, uh, IOB and UCO Bank. Of course, I understand it's very difficult to dilute stake in, in the PSU banks, but the one big name is in that list is LIC. The government holding is still 96% in LIC, and if they choose to dilute, the, in uh, LIC itself, the government can raise close to 85,000 crores by bringing it to 75%. So that's one big number. Now look at the other list of stocks where the government holding is more than 85%. And here there is a lot of momentum in, the, in these stocks as well. Look at fact. Quietly, that stock is up 300% in the last one year. In fact, uh, at, at these valuations, uh, the government can raise close to 4,500 crores only in fact India. Now look at the other names. IRFC, uh, the government holding is quite high. General insurance, new day insurance. In these companies itself, they can raise close to 8,000 crores. But the big stock to watch, which is, which is what I'm focusing on, is Mazgaon Dock. That stock in the last one year is up 600%. It's been a huge multi-bagger uh, in that basket. If, they, if the government chooses to dilute, they own close to 85% right now. They can easily raise 3,700 crores at, at current price by selling the 10% stake. And interestingly, uh, you know, uh, in, in Mazgaon Dock, the IPO came at a valuation of 3,000 crores, and today... Uh, the valuation is close to 30, market cap is close to 38,000 crores. So that's the kind of market cap journey this stock has seen. The other list of stocks is where the holding is between 75 to 85. Even that is dominated by, by, by the PSU banks. If you leave, leave apart the PSU banks, even their NLC India, that, that's, that's one stock where they can raise 700 crores. And RBNL, where, which we spoke about, you know, that, that stock is up close to 300%. And even in RBNL with this OFS, the government has managed to raise 900 crores. The bottom line is, uh, if, you, if the government chooses to dilute, to 75% in this 23 PSUs, they can raise close to 1.5 lakh crores. So that's the unbooked profit that the government is sitting on right now in the PSU stocks. Okay. Rahul, Mazgaon Dock, uh, what's happening here? I mean, all of a sudden... <laughs> I wish I knew, Anuj. Unfortunately, one of those that we don't track, but it's been a remarkable stock. I think... Uh, Have you missed the is ship, There is no right? single institutional investor in, uh, in Mazgaon Dock. I guess this is the best time government can just come out you know, the register will, will improve, right? There will be mutual funds, FIs Absolutely, who can participate. Yeah, no, I, I think right sometimes much? you get that left out feeling also. <laughs> it, it's just, uh, there was this period, I think every day when we opened the money control app and you saw it, it was like 10% 10, yeah. 10 up every day. Yeah. And I was like, bhai, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, this was missed. <laughs> like literally since we're talking about mass ground talk, I was like, the ship has sailed. Mm -hmm. Okay. I but I guess, I guess uh, largely the PSUs have done well, right? In the last one year, whether it's back, PSU banks, whether it's these defense companies, whether it's the railway companies, all have done well, right? Again, but under ownership view. and valuation, Nimesh. I think under ownership and valuation. Defense. Defense, exactly. Let's not miss out defense. The point is they have to do this, right? It's not discretionary. They no, have so to come down to 75% at some point. I mean, there's extension, etc. No, but there are, there are exceptions as well, right? In LIC, the, the government has give, 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 there is an exception to the government that if they don't But that the one has not done well also. That's exactly. Count. So that is one stock within the PSU which has absolutely done uh, not well. In fact, it's below 33% below the IPO price. At, but still, then they can raise 85,000 crores. Actually, on a lighter it, note, there was not a PSU. They will raise a lot of money if they reduce their stake in ITC also. <laughs> <laughs> the government of India has a very large holding uh, in ITC as well. And there's a process of demerger underway. Yeah. But there's a lot. I mean, the way ITC stock is done, 
if they decided to offload part of it there's a lot of money waiting on the sidelines there okay we need to take a short break but we have many more things to discuss uh, you know as rahul was saying itc was also one of the big movers and we had big earnings upgrades and downgrades that came through this week so stay tuned for more on that Welcome back. You're with us here on Editor's Roundtable. Uh, we've been sort of talking markets and uh, everything else as well. But the earnings season is underway for the first quarter. Remember, after the fourth quarter, we saw lots of downgrades. Uh, so let's not take the eye off earnings because at the end of the day, prices over any reasonable time period were, are slaves to earnings. First quarter earnings, right? I mean, we are almost halfway through. So I looked at the NSE 200 group of companies, which is uh, which pretty much captures you know the bulk of the listed universe in terms of market capitalization. Out of 200 companies, 80 companies have reported numbers so far. Uh, actually, but this is as of yesterday, including today, maybe the number will go up a little bit. 42 companies out of this 80 has seen earnings downgrades, uh, and uh, you know 38 actually have seen EPS upgrades. So even in the first half, and we are almost halfway through. When you'd expect that, you know, the companies would, uh, the better company earnings would come out in the first half and the you know, second half would have uh, the big disappointments. It's more downgrades as compared to upgrades. So uh, that's the first thing to note. What I did is I just looked at the biggest change to F524 earnings over the last one month. Basically where earnings were before this earnings season started and where earnings are uh, on Bloomberg consensus e uh, estimates. Again, this is the NSE 200 group. Uh, this will have companies both which have reported numbers and which have which are yet to report numbers uh, so i mean the upgrades first the top 10 upgrades first zomato is at number one 30 percent upgrades to f524 estimates and we are uh, sort of we will get numbers i guess next week bpcl 25 percent upgrade to earnings uh, tata motors has seen a big one 23 percent as well paytm 17 percent Poonawal of Fincop reported numbers just early this week, 16% upgrade there. Polycap, I mean, the stock went berserk after the earnings, uh, and that's seen a 9% consensus uh, upgrade. United Spirits was another one. I was surprised. I mean, actually, uh, there was a bit of a flip-flop. Uh, immediately after the earnings, there was a big up move, and then there was a down move after the con call. DRL and Cipla both have seen about 6% upgrades, and Hero Motor Corp is the other one, which has seen about a 5% upgrade to its uh, estimates on a F524 basis. Top downgrades, Vedanta is at number is the pole position, 18% downgrade to earnings. Dalmia Bharat was a disappointment. Earnings brought lower by 17%. Tech Mahindra, I mean absolute washout, 15% downgrade. SRF, Tube Investments, HDFC Bank, there's Grasim, Hindustan Zinc, uh, United Breweries and Bandhan Bank, all in the between you know 6 to 10% kind of a range. The graphics are on your screen in terms of what we've seen. So the top upgrades and top downgrades uh, so far, halfway through, almost halfway through into this earnings season. Raul, out of this list, where is the delta in terms of stock price relative to uh, how earnings are moved? Which are these names? Well, I think from the li list that you read out, I think, uh, at least to my mind, the biggest earnings upgrade at our coverage universe came out in Polycap. I think uh, mm -hmm. we've upgraded our EBITDA and PAT numbers, if I'm not mistaken, by somewhere between 20-25% uh, on, an, on an aggregate. It's a remarkable company. Uh, I think they're going to do uh, their operating profit and pat between reported 23 and estimated 25 will grow by 50 percent uh, it's almost a 50 percent return on invested capital company i'm trying to dig deep into my mind to come out with the numbers but i think this is a company that will is generating about 1400 crores of annual free cash flow and you're getting it at about 34 35 times it remains <laughs> one of the highest conviction upgrades of the season for once sure. In a, once in a generation company, and I tell you what, this also got me the highest views on my reels. Polycap. It's just <laughs> phenomenal, you know. No, no, the it's the, the interest. company at the end of the day, right? What happens if copper, copper prices, for example, go berserk? I mean, no, so Im suddenly, immediately, it looks very... Uh, very different, isn't it? No, fair enough. Also, the question, uh, Prashant, is how well do you hedge yourself against it? And I think when you're an industry leader, you'll probably have some amount of uh, pass-through right. and cost plus. So, I'd, obviously, these are cycles. 
you can go back in time and look at how HEG and Graphite did once upon a time and what happened post that. But I don't, I don't think it's that commoditized now as it used to be, as you've seen in the case of Havels also, right? Uh, they it's have an FM EG component as well, but that's very small. Absolutely. I mean, right so, now. but I think what they're doing, uh, Prashant, net of everything, uh, is that they've managed to keep this return on invested capital mm. north of 40%, which is remarkable in this mm. in this business. Let, let, let me go back to Dixon. Sorry. Do you extend it to the entire home improvement space, like the Kajaria ceramics of the world? Because this entire theme is coming back in a big way, right? Prompt so, and consumer. Uh, there is a slightly more macro way of looking at it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, KK Mystery has this beautiful line where he says, uh, Almost 65-70% of India's population under the age of 35 hasn't even bought their first home. Mm. So that's the kind of latent demand that's going to come into the system and obviously if that happens. Now, the one thing that we saw is if you have propensity to consume, you're going to go out there and buy your houses and that's why during COVID and even now, numbers are going ballistic. You're seeing it in Lodha, you're seeing it in Obra, you're seeing it in Godrej. Can Kajaria become the next Kajaria, Greenply become the next, next Greenply? Very possible. Mm. I think this is a structural theme and as long as people are going to make houses, you also have to determine, Sonia, whether these are push or pull products. A lot of these are, you know, you hire an interior designer or somebody to do your work and they have their relationships. It's not like you are going out on the street and buying Kajaria or Greenply. So a lot of these are how you deal with your dealer distributor network and I think a lot of these are, are set, uh, so to speak. So. Uh, and they're not too competitive, right? I mean, let's take a look at uh, electricals. What do you have? Havels, Bajaj, Vigard, Orient, yeah. give or take. It's when you look at durables or electricals, yeah. right? If you look at washing machines or refs, there are LG, Samsung, Whirlpool, maybe three, four guys who are got, mm. getting 75, 80%. Air conditioners is where it's different because you have about 40 or 50 players mm. and that's why your margins are lower because the competitive, competitive intensity is, is that much higher. But I think at an aggregate level, definitely. And as a second order, why not take a call on home loans? Okay, okay. Right. Yeah. If, if you're talking about home improvement, you're going to have to take that loan as well. In order to improve And, and I think home. most banks... Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I think most most banks Thank are now realizing, uh, you know, even corporate who, who were earlier seen as corporate banks, right? Yes, bank, ICICI bank, uh, Axis bank, they're now retailizing and a large yeah. part of this retail is going into auto and homes. So yeah. it's not just home improvement, you can extend it to, to home loans as well. Okay, guys, we've run out of time, obviously not out of questions and you are not run out of words as always. <laughs> but thanks a lot for joining us Pleasure. and quickly, 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 any weekend plan? Ashes, that's it, I guess. Oh, the ashes, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nimesh never has any weekend I'm, plans. I just try to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> he, by the way, it turns out to do the most during a weekend. I mean, ask him on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Prashant, I heard you're going for Oppenheimer the second time? I have to take my daughter, so I don't know. I mean, let's see. All the I'm best. I'm trying to avoid it. It's All three hours, so six hours of Oppenheimer, <laughs> then I would have watched it. So, Rahul, what are you doing over no, there? I'm weekend? definitely trying to try and watch Oppenheimer, but I really am in the mood for something very basic, so don't be surprised if you bump into me at Rocky or Rani Ki Prince. <laughs> <laughs> just to go out there and just watch. One. Sorry, I hope so. Again, one. let's go back to where we started the show. PVR. Maybe not. <laughs> Some hardcore entertainment, hardcore entertainment, right? Yeah, All add right. the stock of PVR. Okay, well, with that, it's a wrap. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great weekend. Yeah.